Hello and welcome to Hairdressing Live. I'm Paul Davey and today I have the MC for the whole day in Barbercut, Dublin. He's been so, so busy. He's drinking a pint of Guinness right now. So this is a well-earned pint. Um, we have Joth Davis here from um, Savills in London. No, London. Sheffield. Sheffield, sorry, Sheffield. Everybody says London. I know, I know. It's Whenever everyone Sheffield. comes to the academy, they always <laughs> go to, oh, okay, so uh, whereabouts in London are you? Uh, are about two in hours Sheffield. north <laughs> by train. So welcome anyway. Yeah. And thanks for taking the time. I've been trying to get him all day, actually, but um, you've been busy, you've been doing MC. And how, how's it been for today? It's been really good, really yeah. great. I mean, to say that the, the, the guys, you know, put it together so quickly, really, in the last couple of weeks from having the venue changed on them, and, and, I know. Uh, that's yeah, so it's been really tough, and uh, obviously I've been I've been speaking with with Sam a lot, yeah. like probably every day or maybe two or three times a day for the last last couple of weeks. Obviously his trying, wife to do what, trying to like do what I can <laughs> from here to help him, which isn't a great deal, but help him with the running and things. So to to, to, to get where we are and, and 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 have the crowds that have come in and the response we've got, it's been great. It's been brilliant. Really good. Listen, t tell us anyway about you and your background, I mean, with, with the Savills. I mean, how, how long ago did you set this up? So Savills started in late 2009. Uh, I first opened the doors for the Savills Barbershop uh, on December 12, 2009. Okay, very good. And uh, uh, it was then in a, in a small uh, little shop on a side street in the centre of Sheffield, in a really old little building that was just just enough room for kind of three chairs and um, it was just me nobody else no other barber wow. no other junior so just, just me i had a few shops before i had about three or four shops with different names and i had a business partner and and uh, but we, it just after a while we just kind of wanted to do different things he wanted to do like salon for men yeah. And I wanted to do like this old school barbershop thing, and that's because that's always what I wanted to do okay. from from when I was a, when I first started doing men's hair. When when I had the idea for the shop, when I was in my probably like late teens, like early twenties, and I was like, when I get my own shop, I want it to look like this. And my, my vision was this kind of nineteen twenties style. So you always had that, and, yeah, even, when, always even with other mind, shops. Always, because I, I I love but why didn't all you do that, that with the other shops? Sorry, why didn't you do that with the other? Other shops. Because I had a business partner, I went into okay. business with someone and, and he already had a shop and it was like salon for men and then when we opened up another one we sort of changed it a little bit, went a little bit more old school with some of the chairs rather than salon chairs, they were barber's chairs, but it still looked modern and it still wasn't my thing and yeah. and uh, although we, you know, when we separated the, the business and went our separate ways, we went away amicably, but he just, I wanted to do this barbershop taxidermy, old school and and, and he just was like, yeah, but people will just think that you just all you do is short back and sides. And, and I'm like, yeah, but I want to be the old school short back and sides place. So we decided to go kind of our separate ways and, and, and he went one way and, and I went uh, went another way. And, and, and uh, that's when I had this little shop of Savills. And, and, uh, and by that point, I mean, I, you know, I started hairdressing when I was at school, when I was 14, 15. So uh, I think by that point, I'm, I mean, I'm, uh, I must have been hairdressing, I don't know, probably close to 15, 20 years at that point anyway. Really. Um, was your background hairdressing? So background was hairdressing, yeah, because I couldn't, there wasn't a barbering course you could do then that was NVQ, City That's and That's right, we just had this then. conversation actually. Yeah, you had to do that and then uh, and then there was men's hairdressing in it and then if you wanted to go and work in a barber shop, you went and worked in a barber shop. But the shop men's hair hairdressing was only a small amount, oh, wasn't it? Was it was really small and, and, I, and I did my training for a really big company there. The, the company is now called Regis, yeah, but then yeah, it was yeah. called SNL. I mean, they got like 40, 60,000 salons worldwide. It's a huge, crazy, huge company. Yeah, yeah. And the salon that I worked in had like something like 35 staff. So there was six first year juniors, six second year juniors. And then you had like, I don't know, eight, 15, 18 stylists. So every stylist had like two juniors working on this huge, 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 huge operation. Uh, huge operation yeah. And uh, it was really, the training was really strict. You know, we weren't allowed to shampoo anybody's hair for the first three months. And so we absolutely nailed every detail and knew everything about it. And, uh, and it was going to be 12 months before we could actually pick up any scissors. And I was like, I can't. 12 months to pick up a pair of scissors I need, I need to pick them up now so and I, I remember like my first wage packet I bought like a, a crappy pair of scissors and a comb and I and I just said to one of the guys what do I do and he just he held the comb and the scissors and he goes you just do this 
And so I just to stand watching them all day, and then I, and then and then at night I would go home and get my mates in the bedroom, and it was just cutting hair for free, just trying yeah. to learn with just a scissor and a comb, scissor and a comb, scissor and a comb. And then eventually I got a bit better at it. And, I used to uh, charge you 50p. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't do it for free. I charge you two or three quid. And, and my, my, my apprenticeship then was £23.50 a week. Oh, yeah. I'm, so, I'm with you. I'm with you. It must be the same and, age. And, uh, and I used to go home and then earn more money in a night because I was like, I was living, still living with my parents then. And I used to kind of like walk around the neighborhood, around the box, putting things through the letterboxes, going, you know, mobile hairdresser, mobile barber. And in the end, I would come home from work and I would then probably spend till like 10, 11 o'clock at night just going in people's houses, cutting everybody's hair, charging them Brilliant. two or three or four or five Brilliant. quid and would make more money in a night than I did in a week. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's kind of, and then I, I did my, you know, my apprenticeship. And then, uh, and then I did about another maybe year or two in, in a salon, but we're still doing mostly ladies. And then I was like, I really just want to do guys now. And, and uh, I want to cut guys' hair, I want to cut men's hair. I really love cutting short hair. And um, I know a lot of the female clients that I did have were all short hair as well anyway. So um, I found this little Italian barbershop in Sheffield. They'd been there for, and they were one of the busiest barbershops in Sheffield. And they came over like in the, I think, late 60s, early 70s. And there was a guy from Naples and a guy from Rome. And, and uh, I went and applied for a job. And then that's kind of when I really learned the difference between like hairdressing and, and barbering yeah. from the perspective of shape and finishing and shaving and all the rest of it. And then I kind of never looked back. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what you were just saying there a minute ago? I, I, I try and say, say to our viewers, I mean, when people are educated or getting educated, I mean, I, I, I think because you know, it happens every week, you know what I mean? To have like a couple of hours, maybe four hours a week where they get educated and they're getting through the training. I, what you were just saying, I used to cut people's hair after, after work and in, in houses and things like that. That's what I used to do as well. And that's where I built up a lot of my confidence with experience. Yeah, because I truly you just believe that. cutting hair and making mistakes and then going, I'm not going to do that again. And there was the no, there was no well, internet, you know I mean? no YouTube, no nothing, no tutorials. Yeah. No, no, there's nothing like, like there is now, this pool of social media resources to, to pull from, to just look and watch and learn and these events. And there was yeah. nothing like that then, you know. So uh, it was literally just like, Hack, make mistake, correct. Yeah, <laughs> my God, but that, that, that's what it's about. And I, I do truly believe that um, so, some, of the, some of the assistants coming through, I can't speak for everybody, but don't do that enough. I think they need to do those mistakes at home. I mean, they come into classes, they learn the fundamentals of like classic techniques or whatever it may be. But the whole life is about ma making mistakes and learning from them. You know, as a, as a, as a person, that's how you grow. Yeah. yeah you know, exactly. and, and, and you, you get to different points in your, in, your, in, your, in your career path and in life, and you could go left or right, you know, straight yeah, exactly. on, metaphorically, and, and then it takes you on a completely different path. You know, I, I chose this path with a business partner and it took me one way, and, and then I decided to go my own which took me to yeah. another path and every time I was new chapter. Learning, learning. It's a new yeah, chapter, new chapter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same. we want to get into the education part or actually the, the education yeah but before you do that um, I want to ask you about your product as well your product company okay, as well. yeah so tell us a little bit about that so the product started because um, it just seemed to be like the next thing to do and um, it's been a nightmare, to be honest. It's been it's been really difficult. We've had a lot of bad luck with it, with this kind of manufacturing issues and stuff. And uh, there's not many things that I look back on and go, shit. If I could, if I could, yeah. if I could go back and do something different and change, you know, I would, I would, I would really be thinking twice about doing that. It's it's such hard work. And um, the shop had sort of gained notoriety through however it kind of started social media or whatever and then we'd, we'd move from the smaller shop into the big into the bigger one and then loads of people were watching what we were doing through social media and asking you know how do you do this haircut how do you do that haircut would you teach could you teach would you do a youtube video and, and all these sort of things so then we was like ignored it for 12 months and then there was so much we thought okay so maybe we should do an academy and when we did the academy and then that it just like products seemed to be like the next Thing to do so, uh, so you we started this these? brand which is called copacetic okay copacetic is a 1920s slang word and it means everything is okay no, everything's no, satisfactory no, so when I was looking when I was trying to think of a name and and how I wanted it uh, 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 for the products I was finding it really difficult mm. so I was like well look my thing is the 20s I love the 20s I, would, I, I love that yeah. whole era and the styling and the, the architecture and everything, I love everything about it. 
And so I was thinking how I wanted to market the product. And I was like, well, that's kind of how I want to market the product because that's my passion, that's my thing. So then I started trying to think of names all around that. And, uh, and I found this kind of website that was devoted to 1920 slang words. And then I was kind of feeding through them all, trying to find the right Very one good. that fitted with all the right things where you could get the URLs and the, the yeah, social yeah, media tags yeah, and all the rest of it. And it was actually coined by a guy called Bill Bojangles, who was a really uh, famous African-American singer uh, in the 20s yeah, yeah. at the Cotton Club. And at the end of his set, he would just say, everything is copacetic. And that's where it comes from. And in the UK, it's very rarely used, and people don't know it. But in the States, it's still widely used on a daily basis. People use it all the time. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. What's the name again? Copacetic. 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 Okay, very good. Yeah. I thought I was kind of, it was the right thing, but then I went, now it's like, oh, it's Copacetic. Copacetic. <laughs> and of course, you, we've got so many different distributors in different countries now with different accents saying the same thing, and I was just like, oh, whatever. It, Jesus, you know, where whatever you call it, that's what it is. That's so, amazing. So, it's so, great. You, so yeah, so we spent like two years developing four products, and, uh, and, and I was really thinking hard about obviously the products and, 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 and how we, what we worked with in the shop and we work with like kind of mostly everything is kind of water based. We've got the odd grease based product in but I don't particularly like working with that product myself. I, if the client wants it and when I use it we have a little bit there in the shop but I really like working with clean hair and uh, I find that that's a better cut for me and a better finish because I like the haircut to hold its own shape before putting the product in. Yeah, yeah. I mean Andrew, you interviewed Andrew earlier, Andrew says that line perfectly and I know he kind of was trying to find some other strap line but good hair doesn't come from a jar, he couldn't say it any better. Yeah, no, it's really not true. about that at all, it's about emphasising the shape that you're putting in to make it easier for your client. So. I created four products of which we have at the moment, which is the clay, the paste, the cream, and the pomade. And they're, and they're all which worked. Which is the most? Well, it was the pomade, but uh, and everybody's you know, still, and in our shop, because we're classic cuts and shaves, even though we do all the other stuff, long hair and everything else, people still, because of the way the fashion is, are still wanting those kind of haircuts. So pomade is still heavily used, but now I'm finding a lot of people are starting moving to the drier products, the paste and the clay and stuff like that. Uh, which is really good and then the cream which we have it is actually uh, a water-based grease so it works it acts like a grease but um, it's water-based so it's what I use in my hair so I can take my hat off and then I can put my hand in my pocket pull out my comb and it still works and That's acts right. like a grease because it's got all the moisture in it but when I uh, try and get that out of my hair tonight just warm water and it'll just come out with warm water very good so that that was kind of one of the more difficult ones to, to try and get to get something that acts and works like a grease but it's actually water based look you do education as well yeah education's always been really important to me really important and, and especially when you know you, you, you own your own barber shop one of the one of the biggest things for me when I opened up my own shop was was uh, people it was come just, to you or do you well, in terms of what for the education, education. people come to us now okay. yeah and 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 uh, obviously we started it because there were so many people asking and really i kind of pinch myself now because it's crazy you know i mean well, as we speak men's fire on stage and you know i've got the opportunity to 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 work at some of the events that josh has worked in and, and, and he's all over the place all over the world traveling and all these places next week when i go back uh, to work um i've got three guys coming from china and a guy from latvia and I've had people come from New Zealand, from Australia, from all across Europe, and they just and the courses are just uh, three of uh, two, three, one, two, and three day courses for fully qualified barbers that just want to learn like our way of doing things or advanced techniques. So they're already trained, and some of them are coming with already 20 years experience. It absolutely blows me away that people are coming that distance just to come and spend time in the shop. And uh, and I and I love to teach. It's, it's kind of uh, and going back to kind of you know why, why I think that's so important as a barbershop owner is one of the one of the couple of things that when I opened up my own shop that I, that I, that I wanted was I want to be able to walk through the doors of my own shop look at 10 barbers cutting hair all my barbers cutting hair and, and go I don't know I don't I don't care which chair I'm gonna sit in to get my hair cut today because I know I'm going to get a good haircut. I know I'm going to get the same standard of haircut. Yeah. You know, I know everybody works a little bit differently and the, and the experience is a little bit different, but the same standard of service and haircut is so important. And it was a conversation from, from 20 years ago when I was working in, in a barbershop when I was stood outside maybe having a cigarette on the street. 
and I and I say this line all the time, and and, 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 and but it resonates with me so much. It's like 25 years ago, maybe 30 years, ago, yeah, 25, 20 years ago. These two guys walked past me and walked into the barber shop, and we were, I think, we were like a six, seven chair barber shop then. Uh, another company and this guy one guy turned to the other and he goes god i hope i get the one that's any good today oh yeah 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 and it's stuck with me ever since because i just found that really frustrating because if one person in that shop could cut hair well yeah why can't that one person teach everybody to do it that's very true yeah, yeah. very true very true indeed and one person lets the whole team down in my opinion yeah and, well. and that's really but like yeah. i keep it really really simple the academy i don't go into diagrams and drawing on mirrors and, and, and all the rest of it I literally we get live models in and we sit them in the chair and we do a cut yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. good very yeah. good and way to do it. it and we you know and I've created this method that's kind of really simplified and, and everybody seems to really seems to really enjoy it and really like it and we do it in the barbershop alongside everybody working because we've got 10 stations we've got four stations in the Monday to Wednesday where everybody's got their days on and I think that's one of the things why people are coming the distance because they really love the fact that it's done in the shop alongside everybody working and they get the full atmosphere and everything you've got a great business I've got to say um, I mean I, I look at you on Instagram and um, follow you on um, social media I think your whole aesthetic is amazing Thank you. possibly one of the most stylish men here today um, I've got to say that although there is a lot of stylish men here to um, out there, Johnny Barbar was just here oh, as well. Johnny, they, they, Gary they, Jackson, they, yeah. Really. They look, they, they look we all amazing. love to dress up. Oh, yeah. no, it's amazing. But it, it, it's a whole theme, isn't it? It's like you dress up to go to work. Yeah, I, I think yeah, it's a, I think yeah, it's a whole, definitely, very, yeah. very much, uh, it has a, has a bonus. Do all your staff wear this? Sort of so, thing? yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, when I was thinking about the barbershop 20 years ago and, and, and how I wanted it to look, and my vision was... Um, to have everybody in in shirt and tie and yeah. aprons and, uh, and and everybody to look like there was something from the 20s but then obviously when we when it when we sort of kind of got to it i wanted to strip it down a little bit so we so the uniform is like dark blue jeans shoes no trainers and then it's uh, our aprons and uh, and, uh, and a shirt and tie and it's so everybody kind of looks kind of uniformed and when we first opened up the shop that we're in now which is kind of what we're really famous for this tent sort of station shop in Sheffield and the crowds of people used to just come outside because it was it was like theatre I think it's the best way it's been described to me with because we had this bench down the center and we were walking only and so we had like maybe 30 odd people plus on the bench and 10 people putting all day every day from Monday to Saturday and it was just crazy on a Saturday we opened at nine o'clock and uh when, and, 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 and I'd turn up for work at like eight to start getting stuff ready and already there would be 20 30 people in the queue and I was like what the hell is going on Jesus. That's crazy. amazing. That's amazing business. And now we were opening the doors, and it was like a harrowed sale. It was just everybody was like flooding into the shop. It was just crazy. And then we'd like finish it like half past five on a Saturday, but we would literally have to like close the doors at like maybe one o'clock in the afternoon and say, "Look, I'm sorry, but with this like 40 people on the bench, it's going to take us till half past five to get through everyone." It was just crazy. That time was just so mental. That's amazing business to have, though. That's amazing yeah, business to have. I mean, things have amazing. calmed down a lot now, and, 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 and there was only us and one other barbershop in town for a long time, and in the last two years, I think nine have opened up around us now. So, uh, and, and, uh, so things have calmed down a little bit, but also now we do appointments, so we spread the day out a little bit more, so we don't have huge waiting, yeah. like three, four hours in the time, because the guys just don't want to wait. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. That's understandable. We haven't had that conversation earlier on as well. The waiting period and trying to capture people. It's so difficult. And we're trying to balance this appointments with, with walk-ins. And I've tried so many different ways. So we had like kind of more walk-ins and less appointments. And then people wanted more appointments. So we did more appointments and less walk-ins. And then people were wanting for the opposite. And it's, it's, it's a constant kind of battle trying to do it and trying to, trying to get that right. And uh, But, you know, we're just trying to do the best we can for our clients, that's, that's it, yeah. And so as much feedback as we can get from them, that's what we're just trying to put back into the shop and put it back in, so all I just, we just want them to be happy. Do you know what? Yeah. I just want to say thank you very much for joining us uh, today. Absolute thank pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very thank much you. for your time. Thank you. you can enjoy the night now. I'm going to enjoy have, my and have thank a few. You. But before you go, we're going to keep you in there anyway, but thank you very much no anyway, for joining us.